Hello. <clears throat> My name is Jaime Melis. I'm a um, developer of one of the developers of Open Nebula. And in this session, we would like to address, the, as Carla said, the very hot topic of Docker. Uh, we have not yet uh, integrated with Docker, and I hope this presentation um, gives you an idea of what are our thoughts and what's our, what we're going to do with Docker in the, in the short and medium term. But uh, I want this uh, session to be as interactive as possible, so I know there are lots of use cases um, of Docker that we're not taking into consideration. So feel free to raise your hand and let us know what you think about our ideas. So um, there are many ways to integrate OpenNebula with Docker. Some of them we believe them to be good ideas, some of them we believe them to be not so good. And uh, I'm going to go through these ideas and tell you which ones we've, uh, we want to um, uh, implement and which ones we want to discard. The first idea uh, we had when, uh, and the first thing uh, people were asking us to do was to use Docker as the hypervisor, meaning that uh, when you uh, deploy a new virtual machine, <laughs> okay, so integrating Docker with P. <laughs> Um, we didn't like this idea because uh, the whole point of Docker is the agile way you have to handle images and layers and stuff, and integrating this with OpenEbla defeats the purpose of Docker. You have to, uh, you know, associate in some way the image the Docker image catalog with OpenEbla, and um, it wouldn't be as efficient uh, as using plain Docker. Uh, so we, we think this is not the right approach to integrate OpenNebula with Docker, mainly because of the, the image, the way images work, work in Docker. We did consider, and we do consider actively, the idea of integrating OpenNebula with LXE, which is the um, uh, container engine of Linux. And uh, that's something that we'll probably do at some point if there's uh, you know, enough demand. Um, but it's something we're not working on at the moment. And so as a hypervisor, we think that we're going to discard this idea. The second idea was to, uh, well, as you know, there are some problems when distributing Open Nebula, um, mainly gems. We had a presentation about gems. It's, it's always a bit of a problem. And packaging takes a lot of our effort. Uh, we, have, we support uh, a, few, a few distributions. So we need to, you know, uh, abide by the policies, uh, main, the, you know, follow the processes, and it's it's a bit it's a bit of a, um, it's you know it's very time consuming. So we thought of integrating with uh, distributing OpenEbula with Docker, but this also creates other problems like um, like for instance how to handle upgrades, how to manage hypervisors, right? Because the uh, one thing is to it, one thing is, uh, uh, if we want to distribute Open Nebula, the, the front-end package in a Docker container, and the, another completely different thing is to distribute the hypervisor part of Open Nebula, and it wouldn't make sense to distribute one in Docker and another one not in Docker, like provide packages just for the nodes, and it's not, we still think this is a, a dirt, not, not a very clean solution, but uh, we're still open uh, uh, to this idea, so if you have any suggestions about what is your, the best way you would like to, rec to uh, receive Open Nebula, uh, it would be a, a possibility we might be able to consider. Um, the thing is that if we move to Docker, we would move everything to Docker, we, we would stop supplying packages for the distributions, uh, because uh, otherwise we don't have the, it would be too much of an effort. The third proposal is the proposal that it's winning at the moment, and it's the idea of integrating Docker Machine with Open Nebula. Uh, who here knows what Docker Machine is? Oh, okay, so Docker Machine, um, I guess it's a good idea if I explain it a bit. Uh, consider you have the Docker client tools inside, installing your laptop, but you're using um, um, OS X laptop, and you can't uh, have your Docker service inside your laptop. You have to install a Linux server somewhere with a Docker service or a, a core OS or something uh, that provides you with the ability to deploy containers. Uh, so Docker Machine is a tool created by the Docker guys 
that allows you to deploy uh, these Docker uh, uh, virtual machines or uh, hosts uh, in a very easy way um, and it integrates with lots of providers. So you can deploy, so imagine during a, you have a small company and you don't have enough resources to buy a server to install a Docker engine, you can simply uh, ask the Docker machine to, to deploy a new Docker uh, VM in Amazon. Uh, you can use it there and you know, manage the whole thing directly for the Docker machine. And furthermore, it also allows you to uh, mix um, providers. So you can have um, one VM in Amazon, another VM in Azure, and one VM in Open Nebula. So what we did is uh, we, we integrated, we actually integrated with Docker machine and I want to show you how, how, how that works now. So I'm gonna do a small demo. Uh, we, uh, let's see. Okay, I have, um, we have checked out the Docker machine repository from the uh, Docker machine guys. We have added the plugin um, for uh, Open Nebula. It's written, as you know, Docker is written in Go. So we had to uh, uh, write the Go bindings to do this. But I think the result was quite nice. So, um, <coughs> let me. A little bit smaller. Okay, so uh, just uh, to, to deploy some uh, a Docker in Open Nebula, you can simply pass these options. Like, uh, what is the, the actual image you want to, in, to, to deploy? In this case, we used an image called Boot to Docker, which is a project, uh, and now it's becoming part of the, of the Docker project. You can define how many CPUs you want this VM to have, what is the data store you want uh, to place the, the, <laughs> the persistent data of the Docker machine, uh, what's the size, memory, and what network to attach it to. So let's uh, do a test. Uh, my uh, virtual machine list is empty. I don't have any Dockers. Any Docker, uh, and if I run something, uh, it complains because I basically don't have any Docker container. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create. Um, and uh, I could omit this parameter, the parameter with the boot to Docker ISO, because uh, it automatically, by default, it um, contacts uh, boot to Docker we have hosted. But I'm specifying this because I want this to be uh, quick. And um, I simply cached it localhost, so it, it, it's a bit, a bit faster. Basically what it's doing now, it's pulling the image from the internet, well in this case from a laptop, uh, and instantiating a VM in Open Nebula. And uh, it's a contextualized VM, so we had to uh, contribute to the Boot to Docker project to add uh, guest support, contextualization support for Open Nebula. And uh, well, it's uh, ping, uh, the Docker machine, it's, uh, I think it's very well, it has the, like the, uh, it's very neat. It has the basic stuff you need for it to work uh, properly. It pings for, it waits for it to be running, waits for it to have SSH, and then you know, bootstrap all, the, all the, the, the whole Docker service. So now it should be running. I should have it running in my, in my uh, laptop in this case. If I open the VNC, uh, well, I don't know if something went wrong. No, here it is. So it should be up and running, and now I can, I can use this uh, machine as my Docker. And uh, as my Docker uh, a host. And if I do, There's a command that says docker machine env and the name of the docker that you have just deployed. And these are the uh, um, uh, environment variables that you need, to be, you need to set in order to contact this, uh, contact this uh, docker service. So I'm gonna simply going to load them. And now if I run the busy box, uh, um, hello world uh, command, it should be contacting my new docker appliance 
I think. Okay, and uh, it, it's, it's working now. So consider I'm in a Windows machine or in a, in a OSX machine or in a Linux machine without the Docker service. I can go on with the, work for, with the development workflow of using Docker. And uh, I've done this using only Open Nebula and quite transparently. I can remove the, the Docker machine with the rm command. And if I do one VM list, uh, the VM is gone, and that's about it. There's, there's of course, room for improvement here. The, the data, uh, you cannot save the data, save the data. So if you want to extract the data of this Docker service, uh, right now you can't, but it's something that we, we, we want to do. So uh, back to the presentation. Um, we used uh, boot, to Docker, boot to Docker to integrate with, um, with uh, a Docker machine. And it's based on TinyCore Linux. We had used TinyCore Linux in the past, so adding support for OpenNebula was a pull request that took us like uh, two lines. And uh, there were two things that happened. Uh, on the day we started development, they announced that they were changing the architecture of Docker machine. So it took us a week to finish more or less this integration, and we submitted the pull request, and they told us that they, were, they couldn't accept the pull request because they were completely changing the architecture of Docker machine, and they were going to base it in uh, plugins. So basically, they won't accept the pull request. We're waiting for Docker machine to stabilize, uh, to be stable again, so we can uh, you know, uh, modify our code in order to interact with, uh, you know, be, be a Docker machine plugin. So, it, so unfortunately, I really wanted to be here, ready for you to try out and test. But, uh, but uh, Docker machine is undergoing some changes, so it simply couldn't be done. And the second thing is that at the very same time, boot to Docker decided that it was uh, going to finish it, it because it was going on end of cycle. And instead of being based in TinyCore Linux, it's gonna, it was going to be based on Debian. So we also have to, so they didn't accept our pull request either. <laughs> we had to build it oursel ourselves and host it ourselves. And once they, again, properly migrate to, to Debian, we will uh, add support for Open Nebula and boot to Docker. Um, if you want to try it out, this is a fork from Docker Machine Project. Simply clone it, uh, build it, and you will have your Docker Machine working with Open Nebula. It's not final, it's not ready for production, but if you want to, I don't know, give it a try, you can. And this is the URL of the boot to Docker. It's embedded into, the, into this code, it's hard coded into this code, so uh, you don't even need to specify it. As a consequence, we have created uh, this repository with its, which is some uh, Go bindings for Open Nebula. Uh, they're still a work in progress, of course. We, dis we did just the bare minimum for Docker Machine to work, right? So uh, we support templates and uh, images and things like that, but no cluster support, things like that. So uh, if you like Go, which I really like Go, uh, feel free to contribute to this. Um, to this project and make uh, the Go binding something that it's, uh, can be merged into the OpenNebula score at some point. <laughs> so next proposal would be uh, integrating OpenNebula with OneFlow. I don't know how many people of you here use OneFlow. Can I have a show of hands? Oh, that's, wow, that's <laughs> really cool. So um, OneFlow is a very powerful, we think it's a very powerful solution because it's allow, it allows you to you know, uh, uh, implement flexible rules and elasticity and have multi-VM support. And that's basically what uh, Docker Swarm, and, which is a work in progress, and Kubernetes does, is to handle your uh, Docker uh, hosts and make them you know, handle the scheduling and placement and stuff like that. So I think there's a, there's a big, um, uh, there's an effort that we could do to bring these two, uh, these two technologies together, OneFlow and Docker Swarm or uh, Kubernetes. So you can uh, basically control your service directly with OneFlow and it will expand and uh, grow and uh, shrink depending on your workload directly uh, by OneFlow contacting uh, <coughs> Kubernetes. So the summary, 
of our, uh, the integrations that we thought about is uh, using the hypervisor. No, we're not going to do that. Distribute OpenEvil and Docker. We think we're not going to do that either, but it's not a definite no. We want to integrate with Docker Machine as soon as possible, so priority, as soon as Docker Machine is stable and the new architecture works, we're, we're going to release this. So just uh, stand by and this will be available very shortly. And uh, OneFlow and Docker, uh, it's something that's on our medium term roadmap. And if this pans out, if people like it, we will implement number four for sure. So to finish up, um, what do you think about this? Uh, do you think um, we should do an integration between Docker and OpenEvla in a different way? How do you use it? Do you think uh, these proposals cover your needs? Now it's your turn. Marco, I know you want to speak. <laughs> Okay, this one, this one. Yeah. So for the first, uh, I, last year, I thought about it. I just wrote some uh, drivers, and I think that's not, uh, from my, for my point of view, it's not the way to go. And um, I did some uh, integration, but uh, Docker is for more for application packaging and uh, deploying for, and not for uh, hypervisor or uh, virtualization content. Um, on the second one, I, I was thought about this because when we we have deployed the, the front end in a H availability mode, mm -hmm. and when you usually want to deploy Open Nebula, you don't have a, a, a system for deploying because uh, you need the, the front end in order to deploy VM, and we deploy you had deployed as VM the front end, but you don't have something to deploy because we, we <laughs> you need Open Nebula, for example. And uh, instead, using Docker, this technology could be interesting. Also, for uh, if you want to scale, uh, for example, your service, because OpenEble at the end is a service for cloud, for, in, for provisioning VMs. And so, for example, if you want to scale a Sunstone, you want to add a uh, uh, front end, well, uh, if I have uh, OpenEble in Docker, I can use uh, um, an orchestration tool that uh, with the containers. I am uh, now I'm uh, looking at Ranger, for example, and um, that would be interesting. But uh, you need first to think about how to deploy OpenNable in H availability because uh, that takes some time. We, we did with Pacemaker, Corosing, yeah, and PCS. So that's, I think that it would be interesting because you, you have to deploy as a service. And, and the other thing is that the following, if I want to deploy several Open Nebula distribution, for one for testing, one in production, Docker is the best uh, to do it because you can have more than uh, environment also on the same uh, hardware, on the same host. Well, that's so why my opinion. How many people here do think that we should uh, distribute Open Nebula just with Docker? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that, yeah, that's the catch. Just with no, Docker. No, it's just me. <laughs> just me. Oh, only Docker, no packages. Only no Docker. Ah, no, no. Okay. I'll so, go. so you and packages and Docker. Yeah, I think packages. Who wants packages and Docker? <laughs> no one. <laughs> it's only me. <laughs> so not very many actually. And who doesn't want Docker for the distribution <laughs> yeah. of Nebula? Yeah. I am alone. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you lost. <laughs> I am alone. So <laughs> I can discuss with you. <laughs> no, no, discuss no, just with them. no. Okay. <laughs> Convince them. <laughs> Ah, I don't want to convince them. <laughs> I am convinced that Docker is a big, uh, big revolution, and uh, I, I thought this about CUDA with Nvidia, and it was, I was right. I mean, I, Docker, I mean, for me, is a big revolution, but uh, I don't know for other people. But, um, so, who wants to say? Is that's all, uh, that only another thing. Uh, yeah. I just say one other thing. I, I think you, you should look uh, really at the uh, ecosystem Docker. Yeah. The, the Docker ecosystem, because one thing is um, the support for uh, uh, images uh, minimal OS, like Core OS, Ranger OS, Atomic, uh, and so on. And uh, not only Docker machine, so not only boot Docker, in my opinion. That's if someone is interested in Docker. Yeah. And <laughs> that's, that's the... Uh, the, the last one I didn't th think about it, I know Docker Swarm, I'm working on it also, and... Uh, 
But I didn't think about this, but I will think. I will tell you later, maybe. Okay. Thank you. I think we should move on to the next talk. And we can have uh, the rest of the discussion about Docker in the open discussion at the end of the session today. <laughs>